name is Pavel Urban, and this is... Uh, Darius Severin. Yeah, and we are Android developers uh, with a few uh, BLE-enabled projects or already carried off. And today's presentation will be just mixing some Android stuff, some tools, and uh, Bluetooth. It's actually based on our experience. And we believe that after the presentation, you will know some basic Bluetooth concepts, and uh, you will know how the Android API looks like. You will know some its weak points. And uh, we will give you some tools, like Alex said, to make BLE development a lot easier. But first, you might ask a question, why should I even care about the Bluetooth? Uh, I didn't have to do it before. Uh, and actually, here's why. Internet of Things is no longer future. There's a lot of devices like smartwatches, smart fridges, smart everything, actually. Plus, you can create your own device using some uh, ready-to-use chipsets like Texas Instrument chipset, having the microcontroller, the uh, radio, and the Bluetooth stack for just less than a few dollars. Um, we at Polydia, where we work, see that more and more customers are actually asking for apps that are somehow connected with the hardware component, and most of them use Bluetooth as a way of communication with your smartphone. Also, Cisco did an est interesting estimation. Um, they say that in 2020, uh, there will be about 50 billion of smart devices. So this is a huge number, actually, when we connect the fact with the uh, think that by 2018, more than 90% of smartphones will be BLE equipped. This is a really huge market to accommodate, and you and your customers just cannot miss it. And, uh, yeah, but let's uh, have a look at the history. Uh, Bluetooth itself is a well-known brand for wireless communication, uh, but its uh, low energy part was introduced in 2006. Uh, by Nokia, uh, it was called Wibri and was a huge step into the low energy connectivity. Uh, so, Bluetooth organization decided in 2010 to merge it into the Bluetooth 4.0 standard. And Google decided in 2013 with Jelly Bean to introduce the API for the communication and the uh, whole operations with the BLE. Currently, uh, all the major pl platforms, including uh, Windows and iOS, support BLE, so you're free to use and uh, it just works. Uh, but from your perspective, let's get back to the Jelly Bean. Uh, in Jelly Bean, Google decided to introduce the API, which allowed the scanning uh, devices with limited support for filtering. Uh, they they uh, also introduced the API for connections, both background and foreground, and uh, all the operations like reading, writing the data, setting up some notifications. Later on, in Lollipop, uh, they introduced new features like uh, peripheral mode. It's just a mode where your smartphone could become the, de the, the device uh, hosting the data, accepting connections, and uh, advertising some data. Uh, they also introduced some more advanced filtering, uh, easier to use, and uh, optimized the energy consumption and the background operations. Uh, however, Across those, across those Android versions, there were many issues. The, the API uh, were not so stable. There were some unexpected behaviors when you misused the API. For example, uh, when you uh, called the Bluetooth on the wrong thread, the, you, you had to do it on a UI thread or did something wrong that's specific to the, to the phone vendor or the platform version. Uh, well, it was not so easy to use. But Previous, before the Jelly Bean, um, there were some libraries uh, done by the phone vendors, uh, but actually they, they were not so stable, they were in beta, they are no longer uh, maintained, so uh, I strongly recommend not to focus on them because the device range is very narrow, it's just not worth the price. Well, but about some te technical stuff. Uh, when you'll be developing the, the Bluetooth-enabled application, you will probably meet two important terms. Uh, the first one is generic access profile. It's uh, basically the way to describe the connection and to define how the data is advertised. So on the example, uh, there's an important actor, which is a peripheral. Uh, in this case, it's, a, it's just a beacon device that it's advertising some small packets advertising its presence, 
and the another actor is a central. Uh, in most cases, it's just your smartphone. It scans over and over again on preselected channels and receiving those advertising packets. Uh, remember that from Lollipop, you could also create the peripheral using Android app. Well, let's assume that peripheral is just advertising. Central is receiving those packets in a passive way, but at some point of time, it might decide to set up an active connection to exchange some more data, do more advanced operations. So then on this layer, we can distinguish two more actors. So we had the peripheral, uh, we had the uh, central, now we have the server and the client. So one of the devices is becoming a server. Uh, it's basically uh, a host that's uh, hosting some attributes, that's accepting connections, and the client, which is just initiating connections, requesting the data, setting up some notifications, so the device could just notify you if the data has changed. So we are actually we're talking about the second important term. This is the generic attribute profile. Uh, generic attribute profile is a way to describe the data itself, the structure of the data in the form of attributes, and all the operations that can be done on the data. So another example. Um, this is a sensor tag uh, done by Texas Instruments. And uh, you can buy it for less than $30. Uh, it contains many sensors like temperature, or uh, accelerometer or some buttons. And you can learn Bluetooth or just uh, design your own device even on, based on this, this uh, sensor tag. Uh, and in our example, this is a peripheral. So as I said, it has many sensors. So each sensor is kind of represented by a service. Service can be, uh, is just a way to catalog the data. Uh, in our example, it will be the thermometer. So uh, the thermometer can have uh, some values, of course. For example, the temperature value uh, or some configuration. So those things are within the service and are named characteristics. So basically, the characteristic is just an attribute. It's just a register that has some data inside, and you can do some operations on it. You can read the data, write the data, those are the simple operations, or set up the notification to get notified when the temperature is changed. Of course, this device can have many services, many characteristics. Uh, the permissions might be different for different characteristics. So at the beginning, after the connection, uh, you will have to do the service discovery to know the structure and the permissions, for example. And what's most, most important, to get the handles uh, to access the data. So this is the operation probably done at the, begin at the beginning of the communication. Um, each characteristic and the service, and uh, there, are, there are more models actually, uh, are somehow identified. So the basic identifier is just a UID. Uh, this is a standard UID, uh, which has a length of 128 bits. Uh, but sometimes you will see that there are some short forms, only four characters. Uh, in reality, those are just standard UIDs, uh, but with a common prefix and common postfix. Uh, Bluetooth organization decided to introduce some predefined uh, UIDs to optimize the, the payload because the advertised packet is pretty short. It has at least 31 bytes, so everyone, every byte counts. Well, we have, the, we have, we have now some theory. Uh, now let's move on to some bas basic examples. I will show you uh, how the Android API looks like. So at the beginning, you will probably like to check if the device is advertising, if it's on and it, if it's in the area. And you'll have to get the Bluetooth adapter. Uh, it's just an object that is an interface to, to the whole Bluetooth stack in Android. So you will also have to define the callback. Um, this callback will give you the data that you can use to extract some packets, like scan record, which, which, which is just raw data transmitted by the device, RSSI, which is a signal strength, and the handle to, to make more operations on a device. So this callback then will be passed to some managing methods uh, like start early scan or stop early scan when, when you are no longer interested into the scan. And 
What's important here, you'll have to check the status. Uh, the operation might fail for, for, for various reasons. For example, you lack of permissions, there's something wrong with the internal state of Bluetooth, or there's something wrong with a location provider. Uh, yeah, but if this is, this is just a simple example. Uh, you might want to introduce some more uh, filtering, for example, and uh, you can use the UUID of the services that are advertised publicly. But keep in mind that uh, due to a bug in Android, you can only use the short ones, those four characters, and uh, it's not really simple to filter all the specific uh, vendor-specific uh, services. Well, so we are after the scanning, uh, we'd like to connect to the device. So we need the Bluetooth device. Uh, we can take it from the scan, or we can create it by just passing the MAC address. And uh, we ha when you have it, when we will just call the method, call get, uh, connect get method, and get the get. Get is just an object that you will use to uh, run all the operations like reading, writing, and more. Uh, so at some point of time, the callback you pass to the connect get method will be executed and you'll be notified about the connection state. Uh, please note that you have two statuses here. One of them is internal state of the Bluetooth actually in Android, uh, and, the and the other one is just the status of the connection. Uh, you'll have to check both because it may happen that, uh, that it, will be, it will say that you're connected, but the GAT didn't succeed. It. So it actually means that you are not connected and you'll have to tear down the connection and start over. Uh, well, but let's assume that it succeeded, you are connected, uh, everything is fine, uh, the callback is not so nice to use. So there are two uh, important facts here. Uh, first one is the flag, here is the false. Uh, it's auto-connect flag. It might be misleading at the beginning, but auto-connect means that th the Android will wait until uh, the Bluetooth device will start advertising uh, before just returning the connection. In otherwise, uh, it will just fail the connection after around half a minute. Uh, important thing here, it is optimized uh, for background use, uh, so please note that th there will be a delay uh, between the execution of this method and the connection because the Android will scan in a different way when you pass the true method, the true flag. Another even more important thing is the how to clean up the connection. Uh, in Android, it's just a two-step procedure. First, you'll have to disconnect the device. Then you will have to close the GAT, which is kind of a socket or an interface. Uh, but if you won't do it correctly or in a correct order, uh, you might expect some unexpected behaviors like uh, a an a random errors uh, or, or something similar. So uh, keep in mind that you'll have to build some kind of uh, state machine in order to, to check it correctly. Okay, we have the connection. Everything uh, succeeded. Uh, we'd like to get some data, but first we'll have to do this discovery to get the handles. Uh, we will use the GAT start the discover services method, and we will have to check uh, if it started correctly. Uh, it's a synchronous method. It will, uh, at some point of time, call the on services discovered method. It will also have a status. It might also fail, so another place for errors. Let's assume that it didn't. Uh, we have the GAT. We'll have to re get the service from there. From the service, we'll extract the characteristic and boom, we are ready to read the characteristic, which is another asynchronous process. We will pass the characteristic and uh, check if starting process succeeded or not. Uh, for example, it might fail because you did more than one operation at a time. You have to build a queue, uh, make sure that uh, you uh, do it one after another. And uh, yeah, another asynchronous callback. You will have to check another status, but if it, succeeded, you're ready to read the data. Uh, it's not so, ready, it's so, so easy to use, but there are even some worse examples, like setting up notifications where when the process is pretty longer, uh, there are many callbacks in the API that have to be handled. In every one, there's a place for error. 
So yeah, does it have to be so hard? Uh, we believe not. Uh, you don't have to remember about all these facts. Uh, you'll have you, you can just uh, uh, think about your application and do not think how the Android APIs is handled and all the hard stuff. We'd like to introduce the Eric's BLD library, which is based on uh, Eric's Java, and it basically handles uh, a few most uh, uh, important issues. It will uh, it will fix the issues on the Android level uh, that are, for example, the queuing all the operations, synchronizing them, running on the correct thread. Uh, it will give you the easy API that is re reactive uh, to. Uh, make it simple to, to read the data from the device, but still it's flexible, so if you want to uh, dig into the Android API, you can uh, make it by yourself even using the library, and you can improve your uh, testing, uh, automatic testing, because the library has some internal uh, mocking support, and you can mock the uh, Bluetooth device, uh, for, for example, for automated tests. And uh, all right, so now you may ask why we have chosen the reactive approach. That is because the reactive uh, or Eric's Java is all about observables. And observables are the perfect match for the streams, asynchronous tasks that will eventually do something that we are really interested in. For instance, the device scanning. This, is, this may be translated to an observable. It has a start, it continues, and at some point of time, it will emit a device, a scanned, uh, scanned device that uh, you can uh, act upon. In a general situation, there will be, there, there can be more than one scanned device. But for now, let's focus only on the first one. Let's say that this is the one that we are interested in. At uh, the point, at the time of scanning, we may say that, all right, we would like to check what is. Uh, a value from a particular characteristic of this device. So at this point, we would like to establish a connection. And from now on, we are no longer interested in scanning of the device. We are interested in connecting to the device. When connecting the device, again, at some point of time, we should get a connection. <coughs> Fairly simple. And when we are connected, we should do service discovery, and, and later, we would like to read a characteristic. We are no longer interested in connection. We would like to read the characteristic. It's very simple. At some point, we are also should get uh, the value of this characteristic. All right, but what we have done now? We have just descri described, declared what we are really interested in. And it is this is basically a perfect match for a reactive approach, because there we are uh, describing, declaring what we are uh, interested in, in how way we would like to uh, get it, and actually the implementation is not that important for us. All right, but let's get back a moment, and what would happen if an error would occur uh, during uh, connection, uh, connecting to the device? All right, well let's assume that we have a bit more complex uh, situation where the uh, chain is longer, and we would get an error while connecting to the device, or after the connection. Uh, this error will be streamed down uh, to the uh, thing that is the last thing in the, uh, the, that is the last action in the chain, and that we are really interested in finishing the chain, and we would get that there. Fairly simple. Usually, uh, when, the, uh, when the error occurs because of the uh, Bluetooth uh, trans uh, transmission, the connection is already lost, and the only thing you can do is to reestablish it again from scratch. So, now let's get, uh, get our hands uh, on the code. Uh, just a moment. All right. So, from our experience, it's pretty easy to, to make some mistakes. Uh, there's a lot to handle in terms of logic of in the app, and uh, having a lot of boilerplate will just uh, move you from focusing on the application itself. So it might be easier to, to, to just use the library and uh, focus on the app. Yeah. 
So now, let's see what we are having here. Not this window. Is uh, the font OK? Everyone sees? All right. Uh, so the first thing that we would like uh, that we usually do uh, when getting our hands on a new device, Bluetooth device that we are uh, dealing with, is to scan it and check whether it is advertising or not. Uh, before we are doing that, we need to obtain a, uh, a handle to the Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth adapter. In the Android API, you, are, you can just uh, call a singleton method to get the instance. Uh, here we are really thinking that uh, having another singleton is not a best uh, solution, so it's up to the developer to uh, get obtain the client and maintain a single instance. That is because uh, the Eric's BLE client here uh, does uh, all of the hard things for you. It queues the uh, operations. It's also uh, caching the results of the operations that are heavy. So. We would get the Eric's BLE client, we will create it with a context. And from now on, we can start working uh, with the uh, Bluetooth connection. So let's assume that we will start uh, on, the, on the resume of the application, and on pause, we'll just stop the scanning. So I will get the scan, subs uh, scan subscription and use the Eric's BLE client to scan BLE devices. And we are basically ready. We can subscribe to the values and put them onto the list fragment that I have pre-created before the demo. We are not really interested in the UI. OK, so I will put it there. And also, I will add some error handling. Because it's a live demo, things may happen. So I will show a toast with an error message. All right, the last thing is uh, that uh, usually every callback of the uh, Android uh, Bluetooth API is called from a different thread. Here, you can also be expecting that uh, every call will be from a particular background thread, so we'll need to observe it on a on the main thread because we are dealing with the UI. So I will get the Android schedulers and the main thread. So now I will start the uh, building and see what will happen. And concerning the throwable here, you might see uh, a lot of domain objects like uh, when you lack of the some per of permissions, uh, the Bluetooth permissions in Android 6.0 when you have runtime permissions, or for example in also, Android 6.0, you lack of the location permission or location services are not enabled because uh, it is required that location services are enabled in order to get scan results. So here we are having uh, results, and there are even more scan results that we are uh, interested in. So we would probably would like to do some filtering. And again, we can uh, use almost the same interface uh, as the uh, original Bluetooth uh, Android API allows us. So we could scan the devices with some specific service UIDs that are being advertised uh, in the packets. So I have uh, a bunch of devices that I know that are uh, mm, advertising a specific uh, service UID. So I'll put it here and check what will happen. Yeah, and uh, remember I said that using this Android API, you could only filter to those 16-bit UIDs. Uh, the library is just fixing it for you, and you can use your own specific vendor-specific UID as UIDs as well. So here you can use any IDs uh, that uh, you want to, and it's not a problem with the uh, uh, older Android OSs. Besides of that, you can also do the filtering uh, in all ways that uh, uh, Eric's Java allows you to. So you could, you could use the filter mechanism and get the scan results and check whether they are uh, near or not. Their SSI value is the signal strength uh, of the advertisement, advertisement packet that was being scanned. You can parse the, scan, uh, the advertisement uh, data all by yourself 
or get the BLE device and check its name or MAC address, whatever suits you best. All right, that is about scanning. Now let's check what's in a, something uh, a bit more uh, tricky. For instance, we'll do the notifications uh, checking from this, this device. This is a Texas instrument uh, uh, sensor tag. It packs all kinds of device it, uh, uh, sensors. It has an accelerometer, it has a temper uh, thermometer, it has a barometer, humidity sensor, uh, you name it. Some buttons. So it's a good platform to start your node de development. So what we are starting with is, again, I have pre-created a fragment for showing the UI, and I've taken an Eric's BLE client. Ah, not this. I have uh, pre-created a uh, display fragment and uh, Eric's uh, BLE client. So, starting on resume, uh, again, I could start the scanning here, though I have already done some work with this particular device, so I know its MAC address. Uh, again, I, could also I can also uh, create the device by uh, passing the MAC address of uh, this particular device. We will get the BLE device, and for now, we will say that we would like to see what is the connection status of this device. It's very, very easy. You can just subscribe to, the, to observing the connection state changes of, of the device. After that, we will observe it on the Android Schedules main thread because I will show it on the UI. And subscribe by passing the state to the fragment. I will make a subscription, so we will be able to uh, unsubscribe from it uh, when we are not uh, interested in this situation on pause method of the activity. So I will add it to the composite subscription. So as I said before, uh, it's really important, uh, for example, to tear down connection correctly, but also you'll have to stop the scan or just unsubscribe from notifications in order not to stack the Bluetooth in the whole phone. So, now I would like to establish the connection. As uh, Pavel has said, uh, there are like three different uh, actions on the Bluetooth API that are needed to be explicitly started or stopped. Uh, and also, uh, when uh, dealing with the uh, connection, it the connection needs to be teared down for you uh, in a uh, good manner so that uh, Bluetooth uh, stack will still uh, hold tight after you are fin uh, finished with uh, using it. Uh, here with using uh, observable pattern, you just need to uh, unsubscribe from the subscription at the moment that you are not, uh, not no longer interested in it. You can do it in two ways. You can either have a uh, a subscription uh, reference, which you would then unsubscribe, or you can say that you are only interested, for instance, in the first uh, thing that is being emitted for you. Uh, that is only in the situation when uh, the uh, you you only want to uh, connect to the device and not really interact in it with it. This is not this situation. All right. So once we would get the uh, get the connection, we would map it to something. Uh, but uh, we would like to first... Um the, sensor se the sensors on the, on the sensor tags are, uh, re are requiring to be enabled first. This is in order to optimize bat battery usage. Uh, and first, uh, you will have to write the data to the specific characteristic uh, in order to enable. Then you'll have to just set up the notifications and just display the data into the UI. So, we get the Eric's BLE connection and we would like to write the characteristic uh, at a specific with a specific UID. So, I have uh, checked the specification of the sensor tag and I know that accelerometer characteristic config UID uh, is something. It's not really important at this moment. And I would need to uh, pass new data there. So I will put a new byte array with a value of 
enable sensor code. That is just the code with a, a byte with a value one. You may see that I didn't uh, call uh, discover services here. That is because as long as you are, uh, as long as you know with what device you are dealing with, you probably also know the characteristics that you are using. And in this situation, if the characteristic is unique inside the device, the discovery of the services is all handled for you. You can just uh, use the UUIDs without any problems. And which is uh, important, it was said before, uh, we do also the caching of the discovered services. Uh, so this is kind of heavy operation and uh, shouldn't be done at each call and should be persisted across the connection. So once we have written the bytes, we can we would get that uh, uh, in an emitted value. Uh, we could check if the written uh, d uh, written value is the same as uh, what we wanted to write, but for here we are will not be interested in it. Uh, so I will just ignore them, and I will flat map it to set up in the notification. Uh, I know that uh, the values from the characteristic, uh, the values uh, of the accelerometer uh, sensor are on a particular characteristic, and I know it's UUID. So again, I can just set up the notification with a specific uh, UUID. Uh, the setup notification is a quite particular, uh, quite particular operation because uh, it emits an observable. Uh, that will emit an observable that will emit eventu eventually the byte array. That seems a bit tricky, but the reason for that is uh, quite trivial. Uh, because as all of the operations on the Android Bluetooth API are, are mostly asynchronous. So the same is with setting up the notification. So the first observable will emit the observable that will emit uh, byte arrays when it, the setting up will be finished and you can safely uh, subscribe to the observable that will emit the data that you are interested in. So, when we will have it, we will just flat map the observable to itself to get the actual bytes that we are interested in. So, to uh, extract the, uh, from the bytes array the value that uh, is uh, saying about the uh, Think about uh, the accelerometer readings. I have created an accelerometer data class that is uh, translating the raw bytes into the specific values. So here I will ma just map the bytes to a new accelerometer data. And I can now subscribe to the result. I will get the accelerometer data and put it onto the display fragment set accelerometer values, accelerometer data x, accelerometer data y, accelerometer data z. Yet again, this is a live demo, things may happen. So in case of an error, I will show a toast. I will observe uh, observe the action on the main thread yet again. And make another subscription, which will be unsubscribed on pause. So what's important here when you unsubscribe from the whole stream, uh, both the connection and the notifications will be uh, just uh, turned down. So you don't have to do anything else, just unsubscribe. Let's see what will happen. All right, so we see the status that we are connecting, and we see no readings. That is because the Texas Instrument Sensor Tag is by default being off, and you need to switch it on. I'm switching it on, and we are connected. We are starting to get the readings. When I tilt the device, the readings are changing, so everything seems to be fine. B okay, but what will happen if the arrow will come? I will switch off the device, and I get the BLE disconnected exception. So what can I do? 
With the reactive approach, it's very easy to uh, then recreate the, the, the connection from scratch and try to resubscribe to it. I will get back to the code and add a retry when close. It, uh, it emits an observable that will emit the errors that are happening. So here, I will delay it for five seconds so we can see that the, div uh, that the connection is being uh, that the connection is uh, no longer active, and then check if the error that has happened is a is a uh, error that uh, device has been disconnected. So I will instance of BLE disconnected exception, and now let's check what will happen. Again, we are connecting. I'm switching on the device. We are connected. We get the readings. Again, I'm disconnected, though no error has uh, appeared. We are connecting again. I switch on the device. And we are still getting the values. And that's what we wanted to achieve. So using the reactive pattern and describing the uh, flow on the high level is a really great idea for such asynchronous operations that we are dealing with uh, on the Bluetooth low energy. Yeah, so you can just compose uh, any any uh, blocks you want really easy. And uh, we believe that those problems that are with the Bluetooth uh, development and uh, difficulties of the, the Bluetooth itself could not uh, are no longer a problem when you're using the, 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 this kind of abstract API and you can focus on the app focus on your customers and don't do prob don't have uh, errors on productions on production actually because previously when we had to deal with all the issues it was not so easy so uh, the library itself uh, is on the let's say on the market for for a few weeks now and we have uh, hundreds of stars on GitHub, and uh, the, the community feedback is really good. So we strongly encourage you to, to use it if you have this kind of applications or, uh, and contribute, because it's an open source.